Hey, I want to talk to you today about anchor chains. Do you know when you need to replace your anchor chain? How about measuring your anchor chain to decide what size you need? What about taking the old chain off and putting the new chain back on? Ordering a chain can easily go wrong, and I've seen it, but it doesn't have to go that way. I'm going to give you three tips on how best to change your anchor chain from old to new. You know the old Jamaican proverb, tying your dog with a chain of sausages won't work. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> do you, it is, you cannot tie up a dog with a chain of sausages. Do you want to do it again or do you think... No, I think that's good. It? Okay, all right. Hi, I'm Simon Brown from Sailing Britican and I'm going to show you today your weakest link doesn't have to be weak at all. When do you know it's time to change your anchor chain? So we noticed it was time to change our anchor chain when there were shards of chain just being left on the deck and things were starting to get a little bit thin and we, my wife Kim was getting worried and not sleeping night, at night and asking me, can you go and check the chain please? Okay, so for years we've rotated the end of our chain. That is where we change it around. So the, the end that's in the water then becomes the end on the boat and the end that there was uh, by the bitter end then goes out into the water. And what that does, it prolongs the life of your chain because the anchor chain that's by the anchor is on the water and it's running around on the seabed and that's where it starts to wear away. So we've done this for a couple of years and both ends were starting to wear away. Where the links come together, it was wearing away in between here. It was just making a mess of the boat. So with the mounting of shards coming on the deck and going in the jib sea, and the links getting thinner, we decided to change the anchor chain. So what's the best approach of changing your chain? It's have a system and work that system. By being proactive and following a set procedure, you'll get the right chain for your gypsy. Today, I'm gonna to give you that procedure. You'll be thinking, how hard is it to get a chain? But I've talked to so many boaters that have had such big problems when buying anchor chain. You have American with Imperial and the Europeans and other countries with metric and sometimes they don't mix together very well. And sometimes the chain actually stretches, believe it or not, and the measurements they do are incorrect. And there's a whole host of issues that can crop up. First time I've ever had to buy chain. Um, I've heard people have had some nightmares and had to buy a new gypsy. And buying a new gypsy is where the chain goes through here is $550. So. I don't particularly want to get this wrong. <laughs> so tip number one is you need to know all the measurements and all the information you can gather for your chain. So you can measure the pitch, width and diameter of your chain. So the pitch is the internal length between the links. Then the width is the area of the chain which is the shorter side. And the diameter is the size of the actual link. It's also a good idea to measure eight links on your chain and then when you go into the shop you measure the same eight links and see if they're the same. Also what you can do is you can look on your windlass and there should be some numbers on there and you can check those numbers off with the manufacturer of the windlass and they can give you the DIN number of the actual chain that you, should, you, you, that you need. And getting all this information is so important because there is loads of chains that are, are, they look identical but they are just that little bit of difference. Like I said earlier, a lot of boaters get this wrong and then the chain doesn't fit their gypsy. The second tip is to try the actual chain that you're gonna buy. You can get the short lengths in the chandlery or the shop at where you buy it, take it onto your boat and try it in your windlass and see if it works. Renee from Island Water World here in St. Martin offered to come out and do this free of charge, which he did. You can also take your gypsy off your windlass and actually take it into the channel yourself. So the main thing to determine is that you have indeed selected the right chain for your gypsy. Third tip is the whole procedure of taking the old chain off and getting the whole chain on and where you want to do it. Now you're gonna do it on the boat in a bay, which I wouldn't suggest you do, or you're gonna go into a marina and do it on the dock side there and where we were, we're really lucky here in uh, St. Martin at the Island Water World, they have a special dock where you can actually work on the boat. And it was quite funny when we came in, 
because we ran aground twice to go in because it was really, really shallow. The whole lagoon here in uh, St. Martin's really shallow, but it was quite funny, but eventually we got it. Just kind of ran aground a little bit right there. There's the mud patch that Simon made. So we touched bottom there too. I think we've made it through. <laughs> so uh, fingers crossed we can make it the rest of the way. <laughs> so once we got in, we needed to get the old chain off. So we tied a rope to the anchor and the guys on the dock as I'm letting it out we're pulling it onto the dock and then taking the whole chain off and it was, it was fortunate because they were going to get rid of the old chain and you need to find out is if you're going to put it on the dock is how you're going to get rid of it and also how they're going to get you the chain that you need to the marina or the dock or where you are and hopefully they'll take it away but like I say here at Island Water World, they, they were going to do that for us. So we got the whole chain off and put that aside. Took the anchor off and then we got the new chain and then we laid it all out in lines and then we measured it and then we were put in a different, uh, different lengths we were putting in little color codes. So there's outsides and insides and you clip them like that and they stay together. And this is how we know how much chain is let out. And then she can tell me, yeah, 20 meters out, there's 40 meters out, whatever. So she knows by the different color codes. Once we'd completed putting all the colors in, we needed to get it back onto the boat. So we tied a rope to the end of that, pulled it on, started to put it through the jib sea, and then put it into the anchor locker. But before we put it in, we had to tie it the bitter end we had to tie to the boat because the last thing you want to do is when you go to anchor you have to put the full chain out and then it just shoots off because then it's all in the water but so we tied that off and then we slowly brought the chain back in and right at the end because we've attached the anchor what you don't want is of it to slip off the dock and swing it could swing into the boat so the guy there was holding the rope and letting it slowly come back and then we put it all back in and that was the way we did it for us. Before you want to put the chain in there, we want to give the, the anchor locker a good scrub because ours was just full of a bit of rusty colour. We just cleaned that all out. This is rusting remover, so I just sprayed this down here and it works really well. Yeah, this stuff stinks. Honey, don't inhale it. Good. It's looking a little bit better. A little bit. Look at that. We only had limited time, but if you have time to do it, what you could do is once you've got the old chain out, you can actually paint the anchor locker and that makes it look really good. As a German proverb states, if you mock your chain, you won't be free. And what we say on Britican, whoever looks after their chain will sleep well on Britican. Now this is rocket science. It's just knowing what you need to know before doing a new job for the first time. It's like anything on a boat. If you haven't done it before, it's best to learn from someone that has. Why reinvent the wheel? Speaking of reinventing the wheel, if you're new to boating, and if you want a bunch of great blueprints on how to do common things, like servicing your engine, planning a passage, anchoring, choosing a marina, selecting boat insurance, knowing what to clean and when, safety lists and more, you can purchase our checklist for sailors guide. This guide will help you discover more ways to follow proven procedures. What makes our checklist so special? That we have spent seven years testing, modifying and perfecting them so that you don't have to go through the pain and expense that we have. Our checklist will help you to have a less complicated and more enjoyable boat life. They will also help you to save loads of money by being proactive rather than reactive. Click the link here or down below and you can get full details on our checklist for Sailor's Guide. Here are some of our reviews we've got for our guide. Ovid says, happy is the man who's broken the chains, which hurt the mind, and has given up worrying once and for all. Unless it's your anchor chain, and that needs attention. That's it for the video, thanks for watching.
please like and subscribe to our channel if you want to see similar boat life videos. Bye! I'm going to give you three tips that will ensure I'm going to give you no, three... You just have to... Well, get, get ready to go! Okay, go. I've forgotten them. No, no worries. <laughs> okay, measurements for your chain. As his German proverb says, whoever marks his chain will not be free. Marks? You said marks. 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 Whoever marks his chains oh. will not be free. Oh, I thought you said marks. No, marks. I thought so, it so it's not rocket science. Hopefully this video will help you. Try not to reinvent the wheel. Oh, for goodness, it sounds terrible for me. Thanks for watching. And I've forgotten what I have to say for the rest of this bit. <laughs>